Hello and welcome to the Lost Library and a new adventure from Adam RPG. Okay, feeling much better here. We did some housekeeping in the last uh, last adventure. We were cleaning up uh, some supplies, doing some tinkering and crafting in Otrednoye in our little house. We did some trading and we we did what we said we were going to do. We we're going to start thinking more under, under the uh, lines of uh, the laws, uh, law of survival. And uh, we tried to pickpocket, but we were unsuccessful. We managed to grab a few items, uh, which came in handy, and we bought some salt. We figured out how to, uh, which is important, we figured out how to tame down that rat meat, which is uh, poison without salt. When we add the salt to the rat meat, we then have corned meat and it is safe to eat. So I'm feeling very good about that. If we run into any more rats in the wasteland, we'll happily be taking those things down because we have four boxes of salt with us. And uh, what we're going to be doing in the wasteland is we're going to be looking for more more bandits, actually. Uh, feeling good with the pipe gun. We have a little bit of longer range now with that gun. It's a rifle. And we're going to be carrying the knife, as you can see. But eventually, we're going to make our way to that abandoned factory. So let's go. Okay. Let's go back over here. I'm curious to see what's going on over at this this location where we saw that lynching we managed to do the right thing and get away we ran away because there's no way we could take on all of those guys let's see what's over here right now they can't still be there I'd be surprised if they are no, they aren't. Who's this? Ah, oh, oh, this is our buddy, the fisherman. Oh, well, let's go talk to him. This is the guy that taught us, he taught us a lot of stuff here. It's probably the same guy, isn't it? Oh, no, it's a different guy. In front of you stands a sturdy bearded man. He quietly whistles some old waltz melody and observes thoughtfully the float on the water surface. He feels your presence and flinches. Oh, God, man. You've scared me. What are you skulking like this for? This area is not safe. Had I have a gun, I could have shot you. Not safe. Nothing is safe. You can't let your guard down anywhere. True. But you see, at night, all sorts of rabble gather here. Bandits. They avoid this key during the day. But at night, all hell breaks loose here. Who are these bandits that gather here? Definitely not Dan's, guys. In comparison, his men are like the lambs of God. No, the folk you encounter here at nighttime is much gloomier. Maniacs, cult followers, drug dealers, slave hunters, some creepy people. True, there are enough gangsters around. The man nods sadly and smooths his mustache. Yeah, I wouldn't complain if there were fewer of them, but these bastards are everywhere. Well, this is called transition period. Don't worry, it'll all level out soon. The fisherman shakes his head and heaves a deep sigh. Ah, to hell with it. Let's change the subject. I don't really feel like talking about all this mess. It does nothing but depress me. How's fishing? Big catch? The man scratches his beard nonchalantly and shrugs. Not really. The lake is big, but there's not many fish. Probably because they dump all kinds of shit into it in the Paragon. These businessmen don't care if the local residents suffer. Tell me about this paragon. Well, it's something like a fortress the merchants founded on the north shore of the lake. Caravans from the north, the east, and west stay there. Some to rest and some to drift down on rafts. It's, it's safer than roads. 
There are plenty of highwaymen now. Okay. So what about yourself? Oh, what is there to talk about, matey? Once I was sailing the local rivers on the tug, Ivan Tupitsin. It dated back to way back before the revolution and even bore the name of a Volga merchant who used to own it. Ah, this tug survived the revolution and two wars, but the third one finished him off. Such a pity. Well, what are you doing here? Well, what a stupid question, matey. Fishing, fishes. I come here every day and then sell what I catch and feed my family with what's left. By the way, perhaps you could help me with it. Oh, here we go. What do you want? Well, I've heard giant spider brains are a perfect bait. Thank God we don't have many of them here. But I've heard the lands in the southwest are teeming with them. I want to do a little experiment and try them as a bait. If you can get them, let's say 20 brains? Oh, I would be extremely grateful. Ah, I guess it's worth a try, but 20 spider brains? Yeah, but exactly, 20. That's important. I believe it'll be enough to maintain experimental integrity. Okay, I'll keep it in mind. So what is this place exactly? It's a big lake, or rather, a small key at its shore. As a boy, I would often come here to fish. Never thought this place would feed me again when I got old. Well, thank God it does. So have you heard anything interesting besides those bandits? My friends who have a TV set from Krasnoznamini told me about the beast they saw in a program. It's called a toad ghoul or something like that. This mutant can disguise itself as a human being and then criticize and plot against the city trade council. Okay, well, let's see. You know what? I think I'm going to do some fishing. Okay, let's see what I can catch here. Should we use that spider brain? Hmm. He wants 20 spider brain. How many do we have? How many spider brain do we have? Let's just check. Oh, we have three of them. So 17 more. I wonder what we would get for that. Okay, we already have some fish, so we really don't need to do any more fishing. Okay. But, let's see. What time is it? We have some vodka here. What's that vodka for? Plus one luck, plus one strength. Minus five radiation, we don't need that. Plus, minus one intellect, plus one strength for 30 minutes. You know what? We could do some fishing. Take some vodka and do some fishing. We could use one spider brain, or maybe two. Or we could save the spider brains for something else. Yeah, let's save it. Let's go do another kind of fishing. All right, I think we are done with this area here. So fishing in the day. Bandits in the night. Looks like we have something on our journal that we should take a look at here. Is it Otrud Noye? Let's just see. No, okay, it's not that. Birth. 
Well, a man who fishes near the huge lake asked me to bring him 20 spider brains. He says I can find mutated spiders in the southwest of the wasteland. Okay, the southwest of the wasteland. Well, that's around here, the crash site, I guess, in this area right here. Well, before we do that, we're going to the abandoned factory. Let's go. Oh, wow. Not one bandit? Look at this. That's surprising. Okay, here we go. We're in the abandoned factory. Well, 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 what do we have here now? Who are we dealing with here? Who are we dealing with here? Do we have a map? Not really. Should we stay on the road? Yeah, we will stay on the road. But we will also keep an eye open for things. Nothing in there. And I don't think we're going to put our knife down. Not yet. Oh, what's that? Just wait. Oh, that looks like... Yeah, no, there's poison. That looks like a toxic area there. Let's see. Let's stay away from that. Oh, we've got we've got rain coming. Is there nothing in here? Where's this factory? Where's this abandoned factory? Oh, okay, here we go. There's a guard right there. There's a guard right there. Anything in here? Doesn't look like it. Nope. Well, let's go talk to this guy. Before you stands a grim man with carefully trimmed hair, wearing a padded black jacket. Seeing you, he spits on the ground near your feet, adjusts his grip on the assault rifle, and eyes you coldly. Hey, mate, what brings you to this neck of the woods? Chill out, dog. It's your boy coming straight from the underground. Oh, a real street hustler. How do I know it's okay for you to hang around here? Take a look at this passport. Does this piece of paper tell you anything? After looking at the card, he smirks and takes a few steps towards you relaxing his hold on the assault rifle. Got yourself a thief's passport, I see. This is getting interesting. Where did you get it? Krasna's nominee? Yeah, where else? Right. These cards are only made by those hacks in the big city. I don't respect them all that much, since our team isn't part of the underground. Hey, I just want to join you guys. He wants to join us, he says. Ha <laughs> ha! We're the next closest thing to a legitimate force of law. Our chief's already been talking with the Kresna's nominee trade council. 
We're asking them to recognize us as an official strike force in the region. We'll be guarding the northern border. Get it? Soon. We don't have to loot the homes of nearby peasants. We'll tax them. All proper like. <laughs> no punk will be able to join our mighty group then. Anyone with half a brain knows your ranks are swarming with bandits. The man looks at you with a smirk. You got twitchy real fast, man. I was just kidding. You're one tough son of a bitch. We always need your type around. Let's pretend I granted you amnesty. Can I ask you some questions? What's new around this place? I heard that atom organization is a real thing after all. I always thought only fools believed in it. But the other day I saw a troop of their soldiers with my own eyes. They were passing through Otrednoye village. And they weren't from Krasnoznamany or any other place I know of. Yeah, real food for thought. So how are things for you? The man smiles slightly and scratches his head. Ah, well, I'm standing here, keeping guard over the camp. Good air in these parts, both day and night. Tell me about yourself. I'm called Kasoy, and I work for Dan. I started back before the war, after I got out of juvie. It's kind of a sad story, if you think about it. Yeah, tell me about Dan. He's a great guy, not really one of the high-ranking thieves, but he has a vision, you know? A plan for all of us. But what about this place? Well, it's an old, dilapidated factory. Hell, if I know what they used to make here, bricks, I think, now it's our base of operations. Our small army rests here between our Valiant attempts to protect the local villages from all kinds of trouble. And here I thought we were the bandits around here. Don't think about it too much or it might bite you in the ass one day. Sure, we take our share from the local simpletons, but we spend that money to protect them. There are so many freaks, mutants, and cold-blooded assholes crawling about that without our protection, those peasants would already be dead, eaten, and shit out by now. Sounds right to me. Someone needs to manage the herd. Yep. What's news around, what's new around this place? Well, I guess I better go. Welcome. Take around the camp if you want. Okay. Fairly friendly guy. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary there. Who are these guys? Okay, they're carrying weapons, so I think we'll continue to carry our weapon. Who are these people? We need to see Dan. That's who we need to see. We need to find Dan. Who's this guy? You see a half-naked, thin man with an empty stare. He looks at you without blinking. His body is covered with different, intricate tattoos. Probably of prison origin. Hey, can I ask some questions? Instead of a reply, the man first loudly sniffs and spits to the side. He nods only after that. How's life, pal? The man sniffs again without saying anything. He loses all hope of getting a reply. Before he finally starts talking, his voice sounds like it's coming from far away. I'm like, like I'm in a dream, man. After they knifed me, 
I decided to treat myself to some tranquilizers. But, yeah, what were you asking me? Doesn't really matter, my man. Tell me about this place. Man looks around and blinks. He then turns to you and says, Wow, what? What do you want from my... Quit messing with me, man. Um, I'm guarding the base, you know? The base, which is the old factory. Yeah, okay. I better go. Hmm. Oh, who's this? Is that Dan? Before you stands a tall man in a dusty suit with a leather holster on his hip. He looks nothing like the rest of the men around the abandoned factory. He stands straight, his hair is combed, his eyes radiate intelligence. Seeing you, the man straightens his tie and says in a calm, measured tone. I'm listening. Dan, I presume? The same. And who are you? And your real name, please. Dan strokes his large mustache and looks you straight in the eye. Right away, you start to feel uncomfortable. His cold gaze seems to peer straight into your soul. Lost. The boss writes your name in a small notebook, then looks up again, waiting for you to continue. I'm, well, I was sent here by Kosoi. It's about a job. I see. And why did Kosoi think you'd make a good candidate? We are looking for a very specific type of person. Well, I have a thief's passport. You're one of those types. All right. Not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. So you looking for a job? That's right. Can you help me with that? Job? A job. Hmm. The boss clicks his tongue. I do have a job for you. Or let's call it a test. Go into the main facility, which we're using as a barracks. Look for the locked door with two guards. And talk to the one named Shishak. He'll give you the rest of your instructions. Okay. A man of few words. That's good. Return when you're done and we'll discuss your future. Okay. That was interesting. Oh, and look. There's somebody behind us here that came in out of nowhere. Okay. So Dan definitely has protection, doesn't he? So we have to go into this facility where there's two guards. Okay, where is this now? Who's this guy? Before you stands a tan man in a dirty apron. There's a butcher knife on his belt. He stirs something inside a pot that hangs over the fire. Must be the local chef. Upon seeing you, the man nods. Hey, 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 came for the grub? If so, I can't help you yet. Work for Dan a little bit first, but if you're looking to buy, you're always welcome to do so. Yeah? What about a discount? Damn it. Fine. I'll give you a small discount. Just don't tell the others of my weakness. Thanks a lot. Now show me what you have. Oh, an axe. Vodka. Oh, more meat. 75. Yeah. Canned meat. Hmm. Well, I don't think we need anything like this. That axe is a melee weapon. 7 to 13. Look at that. Ooh. It's 87 rubles, though. 7 to 13, I think that's better than our knife, isn't it? 
What's our knife? Oh, where'd our knife go? I think it, I think we have it equipped, don't we? Yeah, I think so. Okay, 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 okay. Let me come back to this guy. This is interesting. This is interesting. And we can always use his campfire too. Who's this guy? You see a sturdy thug sporting makeshift armor and a provocative occult-like tattoo on his forehead. In his teeth, he clenches a smoking cigarette. A huge camping backsack rests upon his back. When he moves, a soft tinkling can be heard, as if his pack is full of small metal objects. He starts talking to you first. Hey, hey, hello, my brother and Satan. Admiring my armor, are we? I totally understand. I'm very proud of it. Made it myself, I did. The man beats himself in the chest. His makeshift armor emits a muffled, brassy sound. Yeah, good armor. So you say you made it yourself. Personally, with these very hands. Okay, okay. The design of the armor was not mine, but I assembled it, and that's what counts. Oh, and can you tell me how you assembled it? The man looks at you suspiciously, but then shrugs and gestures for you to come closer. I should probably ask you for compensation, but I'm too lazy. Ah, what does it matter anyway? We should practice doing good deeds simply for the sake of doing good, not for another reason to pat ourselves on the back. We do that enough already, don't we? Hey, so? He tells you what resources you will need, how to bend steel sheets, how to sew leather patches together with a makeshift bone needle how to tie up seams, and, eventually, how to make it all work. I've taught you everything. Now you can try to craft your own armor too. But remember, you owe me. That was quite something. I need to digest all this in new information. Wow! What did we just learn there? Thorny armor. This is new. Thorny armor. What do we need? We need metal. What is that? What is that? What is that white? Okay, we have rope and wire and nails. Well, this is, we could make some armor. But what is that second row there? I can't see that. It won't let me. Come on. What if I click on it? No. Okay, well, we have to look for that, whatever it is. We don't have it. We definitely don't have that. Oh, wow, that's good. Armor. Okay. Let's keep going. This is awesome. This isn't turning out to be so bad, this abandoned factory. And I was, I was thinking that it was going to be a nightmare coming here by ourselves. Oh, what happened there? Uh oh what's going on there okay you see anything no so I guess we got to go inside this building here right anything back here nothing nothing who's this guy oh oh what do we have here A piece of tire well we'll take it we can carry that What's in this one? Uh, empty bottle. Take it. That's uh, not exactly the greatest, greatest find, is it? Who's this guy? Before you stands a muscular man with a buzz cut, wearing a dusty t-shirt. On his wide, naked shoulder, there's a simple yet expressive tattoo. The word mama, encircled by a bleeding, arrow-pierced heart. His pouty face doesn't show any interest towards you. His meaty eyebrows almost connect when he deducts you're about to speak with him. What? Are you here to interview me about my criminal record? Yep. I was part of such a deal once, back before the war, when I served time in prison. One day they sent over some students who were learning the profession of prison guards. So they interviewed us on random stuff gawked at us too. 
I felt like I was a rock star. Or an animal at the zoo. Anyway, what did you want from me again? What are you busy with? What else can an honest man do in the den of thieves? I guard, I patrol. If someone finds a good place to loot, I take part in the expedition. When it's time to get the taxes from a nearby village, I do that too. They're lazy people when it comes to paying taxes. Good thing my fists quicken their pace, one broken nose at a time. The man cracks his knuckles in a demonstration of sorts. Isn't that something? Hear any good rumors? I was quite the rumor monger some time ago. Ten years ago, to be precise. I was literally obsessing over hearsay on a particular topic I asked everyone about. But nobody could tell me any rumors about it. Because it concerned a place that was considered far away even before the war. And now is considered unreachable. But one day, me and the boys, we got ourselves a merchant from distant lands. He had a portable safe traveling with him, and he didn't want to open it. So, the boys sent me to help him remember the combination. But when I got to him, I started asking him about my thing instead. Tell me, I said, is there still a city called Trusdazvodsk near Kabravosk? Did it survive the war? Is it safe? That merchant said nothing at first. I asked him again, like I did to thousands of others. But he wasn't like them, because he finally gave me an answer, after whimpering and crying for a bit. Yeah, what did he say? There is no more Trusdazvodsk, he said. This city only lives in local legends. I traveled near the place it once occupied with the Guanjo Caravan and didn't even see a single building left. It's a barren plain now, a place of ashes and sun-bleached rocks. That's how he answered, you know? I should have felt happy about it. Finally, my rumor rumor hunt was over. But instead of getting all sentimental, I strangled him, sank his fucking lockbox in a ditch. Because Churazarvask was my city of birth. Yep. Left my mama there, left without saying goodbye. Deep in my heart, I always knew the city was probably destroyed in the war. I felt that mom never survived. How could she? Yeah, I guess I always knew that I'd never see her again. But I had doubts, and doubts gave me hope. And when that fucking merch told me his words, he severed this hope from my soul. I still see the ashes and sun-bleached rocks he told me about, you know? These ashes are what's left from my home, my mama and Yura, my older brother. This is why I'll tell you the following. Don't ask around about rumors. Sometimes it's better not to know. Wow. My condolences. I better go. Okay. Maybe he gave us a good tip there. Is this where we have to go? Are these where the two guards are? Let's see. This looks like it could be the spot. Yeah, there's a guard there, I would say. Let's go talk to him. Before you stands a slim, busy-looking man. He watches you silently. Apparently, he doesn't want to start the conversation. Can I ask some questions? What are you busy with? Business as usual. I go to meetings with other groups. I rob the merchants. I loot abandoned homes. And that's not all of it. Jobs just keep on coming. Yeah, quite a set of activities. Tell me about this place. It's our base. We're holed up for good. Just like in some fancy castle. Nobody can jump us by surprise. Not from any side. Yeah, I get your point. How's life? It's okay. Lost a buddy some time ago. He went into Kresna's nominee, you know. To 
score some babes. Said he'll spend the night at some old hag's gas station on the way to the city. Nobody's seen him since. Maybe I should go look for him. Nah. It's his fault for taking such a crooked route to the city. If he is indeed lost, so be it. Also, I owed him some money. So, don't bother. Yeah, okay. Talk to you later. You see a short, nimble guy who keeps watch in front of some undistinguished door. He quietly talks with his comrade, but upon seeing you waves his hand in salutation. He looks at you with a crooked smile. Hey there, chief. Hey, Dan sent me. Are you by any chance Shishak? He looks at you with a sly grin on his face. Dan sent you to talk to Shishak. Well, let's assume that you found him. Yeah, he told me to speak with Shishak about a test assignment. Very interesting. And it would be even more interesting to Shishak if you would tell him that. Or maybe you just did. I don't know. He gives you a mysterious smile. I've had it with these motherfucking games in this motherfucking camp. Are you Shishak or not? The man looks at you quizzically. Let's assume that I'm really Shishak. The key word is assume. Listen, my friend, now is not the time for jokes. I was sent here by your boss and he is not the guy to play games with. The man sneers at you and shrugs his shoulders. Yeah? You need to ask Shishak for your assignment. That I understand, but where is Shishak? Well, you're in luck. You're talking to him right now. Maybe. Or maybe not. Listen, Vic. You can talk like that with your hoe or whatever. Say it straight before I shank your ass. Hey, I don't want no drama. I just got bored and decided to play a little practical joke at your expense. You need to speak with that dude over here. He points you to a man next to him. Finally. So is this Shishak? No. Okay. Points you to a dude over here. Where? Over where? Don't see anybody. Oh, right there. Before you stands a broad-shouldered man with cold, cruel eyes. He's quietly discussing something with his comrade. But as you approach, he looks at you from under dark brows. There's an unpleasant smile pasted on his face, as if he's planning something against you. Hi, Dan sent me. Are you by any chance Shishak? Maybe yes. Maybe no. What did Dan say to you? You should know what he told me. The man spits and fixes you with a cold stare. At last he takes out a bunch of keys and begins to reluctantly sort through them. Who cares? Well, I guess you won the lottery today. I'm Shishak. Now I need you to give you a little test. Wait patiently. Shishak starts whistling to himself. He goes through the keys again from the start, happy to take as much time as he needs, and maybe a little more. We need to unlock this door, son, and as you can see, there's a barrel's worth of keys on this ring. Most of them don't even open anything in the camp. They were just kicking around when I found it. I never got around to sorting out the useful from the useless. Hope you understand. Wait patiently. Shishak yawns and lazily stretches his neck. He then proceeds to search for the right key. 
He takes his sweet time, periodically grunting out a meaningless observation to the man standing next to him. Which is the correct one? I can't seem to remember. Heck, excuse me, son. This is a bit awkward. Yeah, real awkward. Nod silently. Time passes, or at least you assume it does. It seems as though Shishak's forgotten about the right key. About you, and about everything else in this weary world. He slowly and deliberately runs his finger around the key ring, stretches and only occasionally raises his eyes to you with a slight grin. Finally, he snaps his finger and removes an unremarkable brass key from the ring. Ah, here it is. Well, you can see how quick I am. No need for nagging, boy. Finally. Okay. So what are we doing in here? Before you stand Shishak, a square built man with cold, cruel eyes. Yeah, okay, we did that. Look here, kid. We keep our guest in this room. He squats in front of the prisoner who instinctively recoils and shrink down on himself even further. Shishak then starts clapping his hands near the man's head in a constant rhythm. The prisoner winces with every clap. He was a little tense. His silence made no sense. I saw the little piece of crap and put him in a body bag. Ha! Ah, why are you so antsy? Stop shivering and look me in the eyes, you stupid fuck. Blinking uncontrollably, the prisoner raises his watery eyes to Shishak. The bandit clicks his tongue and clenches his large fist in the prisoner's face. The man flinches back, but Shishak only grins and dusts off his pants. He looks at you and spreads his hands. He's a nervous fellow and a quiet type, maybe because of the gag. <laughs> Who is he? Some schmuck from Otrid Noye. Talked up a storm about his money. But was it worth it? I don't think so. So now he has free accommodations in our luxury apartments. <laughs> Believe me, in the beginning I was gentle with him. Just gave him a couple of quick chin checks. That's all. But he kept screaming. Something along the lines of, I said some stupid things. I have nothing on me. He's bluffing. I'm telling you. Okay, and what do you need me to do? Your job is easy peasy. Look here. Shishak reaches into his jacket, pulls out a polished TT gun and hands it to you. Grip first. This is a gun with one bullet and here's this mutton head. The rest is up to you. You've got carte blanche. Kill him right away or extract a little payment first. I don't really care since he only plays one sad tune. I don't have any money. I'm not a millionaire. Only the grave will fix what's wrong with him. That or some vigorous abuse of vital organs. The bound prisoner begins to shudder and mumbles something into his gag. He looks up at you with a mixture of hope and fear. But leaning more towards fear, Shishak takes a couple of steps back and watches with interest. The second thug joins him. Pistol whip the prisoner. You wind up and strike the bound prisoner with the pistol grip. The man instinctively pulls his head as far as he can into his shoulders. Shishak grins and winks at his companion. Look at this guy. Eh, that's a man who enjoys his work. Hit the prisoner again. You hit the prisoner and he tosses his head from side to side, as if to demonstrate that he's hurt in some naive attempt to make you to stop. In the far corner of the room, Shishak coughs loudly and yawns into his fist. Aim at the prisoner. You aim the gun at the prisoner. The bound man begins to quietly whimper and slowly crawls away from you. His gaze, as full of terror as a wounded deer, is fixed on the muzzle of the gun.
shoot him in the leg. You pull the trigger and nothing happens. Instead of a shot, there's only a clicking sound. The magazine is empty. You look at Shishak in astonishment while the captive, still unscathed, quietly sobs on the floor. Shishak throws you a cheerful wink as he takes the gun from your hands. Ah! You really thought that it was loaded, son. What a clown. Turns out this lucky bastard has a use after all. I still feel like he didn't tell us everything, but we also got to see you from an interesting angle. You were actually going to gun him down in cold blood. Yeah. Sure, call me Zoomir. The man gestures his friend over and whispers something in his ear, then slaps him on the back. Chenier runs out of the room. Now go. Let's see what Dan has to say all about this. Interesting what passes for a test around here. See ya. Whoa! Wow, that was fun. That was fun and interesting. What is going to happen? We're going to find out in the next episode what Dan has to say about our actions with the prisoner. I hope you're enjoying it. Adam RPG. Thank you very much for watching and we will be back soon.